Hello, everybody. It's good to see you. It's a warm, sunny afternoon over here in Calabar. My name is Professor Ia Eze, a professor of chemical pathology in the Department of Clinical Chemistry and Immunology in the University of Calabar. And I'm your host on the Bio Risk Management Series. And we have a very interesting topic today. And that topic is called Hazard Symbols in Bio Risk Management. I hope you so like I said, we're going to be doing hazard symbols in bio-risk management. And I remain Professor Eya Ezebasi, and this is the bio-risk management series. All right. So before we continue, I would really like to thank you so much for your support all this while. We've grown over to 4,000 subscribers and we are still growing strong. Like I keep saying, this is a free resource. So please help us to like, help us to subscribe help us to comment and to share with other people you think may need this resource. So why do we want to do this course? We want you to be able to know and identify key hazard symbols and their meanings. We want you to be able to understand the practical applications of hazard symbols. And we need also for you to understand best practices and compliance. So, what are key hazard symbols and what are their meanings? You can see a diagram with so many symbols. And really, hazard symbols are universally recognized symbols designed to alert individuals to the presence of hazardous or dangerous uh, materials, locations, or conditions. These symbols aim to alert lab participants of potential dangers and remind them of the steps to take to eliminate said dangers. And these symbols are actually global. So even if you are German, you are Nigerian, you speak French, you speak uh, Swedish language, whatever, these symbols are universal and they mean the same thing in different languages. So even if somebody comes on a transfer, he knows that this place is how has this kind of dangers. All right. So why do they really matter? Hazard symbols help us to communicate safety information. Like this is, this contains bacteria that are hazardous. This is a chemical that can burn you and all that. So they help to prevent accidents and ensure safe handling of chemicals. So the first symbol we're going to be looking at is explosive materials. Uh, it's like these yellow symbols with an explosion in the middle. And the meaning is that the substances within this area may explode under pressure, under heat or shock. For example, Dipercric acid, nitrocellulose, peroxide forming compounds like one for dioxane and others constitute uh, materials or substances that are explosive in nature. The next is flammable materials. These are materials that can catch fire very easily. All right. If there is any spark or any flame near there, for instance, alcohol, you know, in the lab, we have things like 95% alcohol, we have acetone and things like benzene, which are very flammable. The next we'll be looking at is oxidizing agent. What is an oxidizing agent or what does this sign signify? It signifies that that substance can cause or intensify fire or it releases oxygen and helps... <laughs> by, uh, you know, to burn very easily. This reminds me of, you know, there are some people who easily cause quarrel. There are others, they don't cause the quarrel, but they make the quarrel get higher, higher and hotter. You know, that's what it reminds me. That's by the way. So examples are hydrogen peroxide, bromine, sodium perchloride, and chromic acid. The next substance we are going to be looking at is corrosive substances. Like you can see, it's a triangle with a uh, substance dripping on uh, somebody's hand or on a surface. And uh, this means that this substance can destroy living tissues or materials, including metals, on contact. And they include uh, dangerous fluids like sulfuric acid, like sodium hydroxide, that's not a fluid, sodium hydroxide. <laughs> and hydrochloric acid all right we also have a sign for toxic materials you can see uh, the skull and the cross bones and this usually indicates that those substances can cause serious health effects 
or death if inhaled, swallowed, or absorbed. So usually, they don't even wait for you to go because what is called acutoxicity. And this includes cyanide, which is very, very dangerous, formaldehyde, and some byproducts of chemical reaction. So that is why sometimes you see somebody is working on something and it suddenly faints. Most probably it has inhaled some fumes that has you know, caused some sort of toxicity. Health hazards. You can see a um, picture of a person with a heart with a race going each and everywhere else. This just means that the substances there could cause cancer. It could also cause respiratory issues or reproductive issues. And you don't want to have reproductive issues. You don't want to have cancer. You don't want to have respiratory issues. So keep away when you see the silhouette, the star on the chest. So examples include acetaldehyde, formaldehyde, halogenated liquids, ephidium bromide. The next symbol we are going to look at is the biohazard symbol. It's a circle with three other circles around it. And it means that this things or substances can pose a threat to human life when they are inhaled or eaten or come in contact with skin. You know, they can cause illnesses such as food poisoning, tetanus, respiratory infection, parasite infection. Take note, those of you that like eating in the lab, these kind of things can happen to you. You don't want them to happen to you, so don't eat it in the lab. All right? So examples are biological health hazards, which include bacteria, viruses, parasites, molds, or fungi. The next one we are going to look at is environmental hazard. You would say, ah, what's the need of environmental hazard in the lab? A lot of things you produce in the lab, a lot of waste you produce in the lab would harm the environment if released carelessly into the environment, okay? So if you see this sign, that means that the substances there are harmful to aquatic life and ecosystems. You should know how you get rid of them. Follow the SOPs. They include mercury, waste from disposal of chemicals, biological agents, and other hazardous materials in the laboratory. All right. Ah, this is radioactive hazards. Sometimes in the lab, we do use radioactive substances, especially when, like in clinical chemistry, you could be doing um, radioimmunoassays, uh, radio all right? Uh, and some other things with uh, radioisotopes. It means, this sign means that those substances you're working with could, you know, emit rays, radioactive rays, and radioactive rays are known to cause cancer and some other types of diseases. So where can you find, you know, these substances? You find them wherever ionizing radiation or radioactive sources are present including in objects, in equipment, in premises, or in vehicles. So be very, very, very careful and be appropriately dressed before you enter such places. Electricity hazard. This means that there is the presence of a high voltage, okay? And then you could get an electric shock or you could get electrocuted. So please be very, very, very careful. And this could happen when circuits are overloaded, or electrical parts are exposed. I don't know why they should be exposed, but if for any reason they're exposed, or electrocution of bones from lack of PPE. All right? Then, having looked at all these hazards, you should know that even though those hazard symbols are there, if you are not proactive in taking time to read the labels, in being well kitted with your personal protective equipment, which include your gloves, your goggles, your lab coats. If you do not know the SOPs and you do not know the emergency procedures, you will still have problems. So please learn your hazard symbols and dress properly and act properly whenever you are in the lab. Knowing your hazard symbols saves life. Let's handle everything in the lab we care thanks for listening remember to subscribe comment like share if you haven't done so thank you and god bless bye